um, we actually identified 38 websites they went to, but uh, here we report the top three most visited websites. The first one is Google, which is um, used by 62% of people. Um, we call their reasons, and then, then we categorize them into two domains. The first one is the user-friendly. Um, they're fast, they're simple, they have large database. And the second one is the learning-enhancing features. Okay, there are a lot of features that they think has enhanced their learning. Okay, the next one is Wikipedia, also user-friendly. And um, the black part is what they share, you know, and, and the, the red part stands for the particular features of the website that's different from other websites that can enhance their language learning. Like, um, the texts are all illustrated in Wikipedia, and there are always embedded links in text that, we call, that can um, take you to other web page for further information. And also, this um, learners can can see the information in different other languages, like Chinese, Korean. The next one is dictionary.com. Um, so those two features are most noted. The first one is more nuanced differences between the word and its synonyms. And the second one is the, the function to create words to learn. You can create <coughs> words to learn of your own. So that it saves the words that you want to review. So next time when you log in, you can see those words again. Okay, you can accumulate the word and make a list. All right. And those are the other websites they went to. Um, well, this is actually very informative references for us to know um, how they take advantage of the features to enhance their own language learning. All right. Then our second question is how do they find necessary support using the online resources? And then we um, identify four main strategies they use. The first one is um, multiple resources and verification. Uh, in our framework, we say that reading is a process of constructing meaning. So people construct meaning from um, the information from multiple resources. Like they have, they go to multiple websites um, and they verify the information by triangulation. They sometimes open different web page on the same screen simultaneously. Like Kim, open Naver and Google at the same time, and it's frustrating to see, oh, this word is explained here like this, and that is with red, okay? And people also do, no, people also do the L1, L2 triangulation. We, in our framework, we also say that um, people will, will use their knowledge in L1 or their previous knowledge in L1 to verify what they know in English. So we notice that in our, from our observation. And they also go uh, gather information from multimedia, like YouTube, image, and Google website. So Fong, um, a Tony student, he thinks that Google image helps him a lot to, to know the meaning of the words. Mm -hmm. right. The second one is knowledge about characteristics of websites they visit so that they can um, take advantage of features of this, those websites to help them know something. Um, some like some websites run faster, like Google. Mm -hmm. Some have good dictionary. Um, some have like uh, categorized the results, like neighbor. All right. So Fong, he likes um, Google Dictionary again. And Dr. Rai, they all have different strengths. Third one is content specific website. So um, we found that our participant knows where to find those um, field specific knowledge. So those are from our online and uh, in-depth participant three websites to go. The last one is searching strategy. There are some strategies we notice they use. The first one is control F. Um, that's actually a function that can help you locate a necessary keyword in the screen immediately. So um, one of our participants actually indicated that he uses a lot this function because that helps him get the meaning of the, of the word. Like, when he opened a web page, he would use this function, and he would see, okay, this word has been used three or four or five times in different places in the text. And he can see, okay, this word is, is explained and used here this way and other ways. He can compare. And that is frequently used by him. Um, Kim also said that that can prevent her from losing the, a lot of talk, a lot of text again. Um, another one is using the sorting feature of a website. This is specifically in Google Chinese. 
where you can keep in, uh, you can type English, and then you can click on only show results in Chinese, so that only Chinese results are presented. So even if even if it's English, you can still see um, some explanation in Chinese. Okay, then um, in the discussion we had some um, discoveries. The first one is that um, from our observation and the interview of it's actually four pilot testers and our participant, we found a pattern. Um, before they start their search, they actually um, make decisions whether what they want is lexical support or content support. Um, if they don't know a word that's lexical support, they usually go to online dictionaries. But they usually just look at the definition and then that's all. They won't <coughs> search for further information. If they think that it's content support, they have some unknown, unfamiliar thing to read, they will go to content support and they search in Google, Wikipedia. Then that's when they use most of the new literacy skills. That's locating, evaluate, and synthesize information, all that, right? And then we also found that um, from the data on online dictionary use, this is mostly from our online survey, we have a list of most identified features of those dictionaries they use. This is um, something they have in common, and they also have some strength of their own, like the next one. Um, Google has simple interface design, so that runs faster, and it's not distracting. Neighbor has Corpus Lookup, and the next one, Dr. I, I think this is used only in Taiwan. Dr. I has grammar focus um, and word by word translation. ICBA is also used in China, I think. So it's used in China. It has sample sentences in collocation. And Yahoo, it has related word comparison and word by word translation. So they all have their own strengths, um, those dictionary, which will lead to our discussion of the depth of vocabulary, which is proposed by Hudson. So we, from our observation, we see that learners, they don't usually go to, they usually don't read those formal, inf further information in the dictionary. Once they see, okay, this is what I mean. So we propose that, um, Hudson proposed that uh, a word, actually there are multiple meanings and multiple concepts and knowledge beyond a word, um, far beyond the, the literal definition of so we suggest that we, as language instructors, um, can encourage our students to take advantage of those features of dictionaries <coughs> to further explore a word, the meaning of a word, not only the definition of a word. Okay. Uh, as we put together our findings uh, uh, from this study, we realized that a lot of research related to our particular topic is done in the School of Informatics particularly in human-computer interaction. And they, in, in educational research, uh, there's, I, don't, I didn't see many papers that uh, tried to uh, integrate uh, this body of knowledge in human-computer interaction. So our, uh, I, we realized that that's our uh, limitation, and our future study has to uh, try to integrate um, HCI uh, area. And also our participants only uh, are only international graduate students from East Asian countries. So we will uh, next uh, future study has to uh, address uh, more uh, participants. And also we only talk about uh, advanced learners uh, in terms of their L1, L2. Uh, so it might be very interesting to compare how uh, advanced learners and uh, beginners, uh, what kind of different uh, service they use and what kind of different uh, skills and strategy they use uh, for their online reading. That's it. Oh, yeah, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it, yeah, there was one more So, uh, as we finish our study, uh, we were curious, <laughs> we were curious that how our participants learn those things, learn about different uh -huh. services and how uh, the different skills. So we went back to our participants and asked two questions. First of all, where did you guys learn about this? And they all say, I learned by myself, mm -hmm. or I learned from my friends. Mm -hmm. And then our question, second question was, 
few things. If I, these few things need to be taught in school, particularly in uh, second language reading course, they said yes. So we suggest that, suggest that we at least have a short section about uh, like explicitly uh, introducing like different options out there of, in terms of online resources, and and then different strategy can uh, that can be used when they are reading online. Uh, so two range of instruction can be implicit, uh, explicit instruction, and also as far as the technology is concerned, uh, teacher may not be the only source of knowledge in the classroom. Students have different uh, knowledge and, and and different know they they know different skills. So it might be uh, beneficial to try peer modeling and uh, reciprocal teaching, uh, which is actually suggested. I'm quite old at all in 2018. Thank you very much.